coach Craig Proctor. How you doing? Today we're going to talk about how you're going to get paid when you represent a buyer. Uh, up until now, I guess the last 70 years or so, uh, it was easy, right? Um, you got paid through the listing agent. So the seller paid the listing agent and generally you got half the commission, but that didn't always happen, right? How many of you noticed that the commissions being paid to the buyer broker were going down and down and down and down? So it's a problem, right? You're representing your buyer, but you don't know what you're going to get paid because the seller and the listing agent were deciding how you're going to get paid. I've been teaching real estate agents for the last 10 years how to negotiate their fee directly with the buyer. And of course, if you've been paying attention to all of these lawsuits, uh, what is going to be happening here, we don't know exactly when, is it looks like uh, we're not going to be allowed as a listing agent uh, to offer commission to the buyer broker. Um, remember, the National Association of Realtors wasn't just charged with conspiracy, they were found guilty of conspiracy. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how are you going to get paid when you're representing a buyer if zero is being offered on MLS? So please check in, let us know that you're with me here today and what marketplace you serve. And we're going to talk about how you can negotiate a higher fee with your buyer. Um, this is not bad news. This will be good news. And again, I've been teaching real estate agents to do this for over 10 years. Uh, we'll talk about, well, how are you going to get paid if zero is being offered? And sometimes uh, you're not happy with the commission that's being offered when you represent the buyer. Now, if we look at commercial real estate, this is generally how it's done. It's not weird and commercial. It's called normal, where um, the buyer pays you your commission when you represent uh, the buyer in a commercial deal. Now let's step out of real estate for just a minute and think about why this lawsuit happened and why the NAR and some of these big franchises lost and why other franchises like Remax and Keller Williams settled out of court. Okay, so for them to settle out of court, obviously they were afraid they might lose and they made a good decision because the NAR did lose. Now the Department of Justice is probably gonna get involved and because the NAR couldn't figure this out, there was a beef between the Department of Justice and the NAR. You probably heard about the fact that they had a deal and then uh, the Department of Justice sort of pulled out of the deal and that's been going back in the courts. So let's have a look at other countries. Other countries like Australia, basically there's a portal like a Zillow-like portal, a public portal, and all the listings go on there. Now, if you're a buyer, you could choose to have your own agent. You could choose to do that. But in Australia, that doesn't really happen that much. Um, most buyers just call the agent with the sign on the front lawn and they do it that way. Is that the way it's going to work here? We, we're not sure yet. But if we take a look around at all the other countries outside of North America, real estate doesn't work the way it's working here. So um, the lawsuit... Um, it was deemed to be a violation of the law, okay, because the seller was being forced to pay the buyer a commission when the seller did not receive any services from the buyer agent, right? We can't really argue that, right? The buyer agent, by nature of their relationship, is representing the buyer. The buyer agent's not representing the seller. The buyer agent's trying to get the lowest price and the best terms for the buyer, that's why this thing goes legal, okay? Because uh, sellers uh, were forced to pay uh, the buyer a commission. Now, you could say, well, that's not true, Craig. They weren't forced to do anything. And I've also heard a lot of realtors say, well, the seller knew what they were getting into. They knew what the commission was, and that's all true. Um, this wasn't a real estate problem. We were all good with the way things were working. Uh, but apparently, uh, the way this was set up where the seller had to pay a buyer agent something. They had to. That was an NAR rule. In 2020, the National Association of Realtors passed the CCP, Clear uh, Cooperation Policy, uh, which mandated that if a seller wants to list their home on MLS, they had to offer some kind of money to the agent representing the buyer. Okay? And that is uh, where the lawsuit, uh, that, that's the problem we've got with this lawsuit. Apparently, it's a violation of something called the, the Sherman Act, okay, the Sherman Trust. Uh, if you take a, a look at the Sherman Act, uh, you Google that, 
You'll see that was way back in the 1800s. Uh, but anyway, long story short, the National Association of Realtors and several franchises that were sued, they lost. Okay, they weren't found guilty. They actually lost. Now, this will be appeal. They're probably going back and forth for a bit. But there's one certain change uh, from the lawyers that I've been talking to is that, uh, well, first of all, the National Association of Realtors uh, was sued for $1.8 billion with a B. Now, I think you would agree, they don't have $1.8 billion. Now, the lawyers um, working for uh, the plaintiffs uh, don't want the NAR or these large franchises to go broke, to go belly up, or they won't get any money at all. That's why franchises like Remax settled for $70 million. Keller Williams, I think, was $85 million. So the lawyers want to try to get as much as they can without the institution, organization, or franchises going belly up, obviously, right? Uh, now, the crazy part about this is the homeowners are not getting much money out of this. Guess who's getting all the money? The lawyers are getting uh, the bulk of the money. Anyway, you might be saying, well, Craig, what has this got to do with me? Well, if these changes happen, uh, it will be prohibited for the seller or the listing agent to share the commission. Okay, that will go away. Now, a few questions. You might be thinking, well, these MLSs, like what's the definition of an MLS? An MLS is a commission sharing portal. That's the reason we have MLS systems, right? It's a commission sharing portal. Now, if uh, you're not able to share the commission, does that mean there will be no MLSs? You could argue, well, why would we need a commission sharing portal if there actually is no commission sharing allowed? Now, we could argue that your listing commission will go up because if it's true, like in Australia, where if buyers are faced with the fact that they have to pay their agent for representation, some buyers are not going to do that, right? Some buyers would just call the listing agent. I mean, we have that happening now, right? You talk to a buyer and they're like, oh, I'm only calling listing agents. Why? Because I think I'm going to get a better deal. Now, can you imagine, let's say, let's say last year you sold a $2 million home. Okay, and I don't know, the commission was 5% and you're, the listing agent's getting two and a half and you're getting two and a half. That means you made $50,000, okay, to sell that, million, that uh, $2 million home. Okay, now if these rules change, can you imagine saying to your buyer now, oh, uh, by the way, you're responsible for my fee when you buy that $2 million home and you've got to cut me a check for $50,000, and this is the issue that came up in this court case is that it was agreed, okay, um, by the jury that the way real estate is structured is artificially raising the commissions that a buyer agent would make. In other words, if this rule didn't, uh, didn't exist, uh, they believe that there's no way somebody buying a $2 million home would cut a check for their realtor for $50,000. Now, that doesn't mean nobody would, but this is their argument. And they did all these studies with these other, uh, you know, all the different countries and typically what agents make when they represent a buyer. So what do you guys think? If you said to your buyer, um, hey, um, you know, I, I would like to represent you. And the, the buyers do want representation, right? The buyers want it. Okay, I don't think you're going to meet many buyers that say, I don't want representation. I'd rather go it alone. That's not the question. The question is, is what are they going to be prepared to pay? So I want you to imagine you're selling, you've got this buyer that wants to buy a $2 million home. Now they could call the listing agent, but you want them to work with you. Imagine if you said to them, well, uh, to hire me, uh, you got to stroke me a check for $50,000. I had this conversation actually with a friend of mine in California that just bought a $2 million home last year. And I was, she's not in real estate, so I was explaining all this to her. And she's like, wow. Um, I said, Did you, do you know how much your real estate agent got paid when you bought the $2 million home last year? And uh, she said, no, I have no idea. It didn't cost me anything. Well, I said, your real estate agent who represented you as the buyer when you bought the $2 million home got paid $50,000. She's like, wow. I said, now, if you had to pay that agent, okay, um, first of all, would you want an agent? Yeah, I'd want an agent. Okay, why would you want an agent? Well, uh, to do the paperwork, I suppose my agent, you know, represents my best interests, would save me some time. And I said to her, what do you think that's worth? She said, I don't know, maybe $10,000. So we got this huge gap, right? We're used to getting paid 50 grand and uh, the buyers might think this is worth 5,000 or $10,000.
So uh, this is the point they made in court. Now, uh, whether we agree with the verdict or we don't, it is what it is, right? I mean, it's kind of crazy that organized real estate worked this way for 70 years. Nobody had a beef. And all of a sudden, now there's all these copycat lawsuits. And if you're in Canada, don't think it's not happening there. There's lawsuits happening in Canada right now. Whatever happens in the U.S., usually a couple of years later, it's, it's happening in Canada. What is my point of sharing all this with you? You guys should be really interested in how to, number one, attract buyers so you can choose to work with buyers that will actually pay you. And then you need to learn how to be able to articulate your value so the buyer is willing to pay you because that's what it's going to come to. I mean, look, it's been easy up till now, right? We could say to the buyer, well, I get you pre-qualified for financing and I show you all the houses and I get you priority access to all the new listings. And uh, when you see a home you like, I negotiate that price and uh, I help you all the way through closing and you get all that and none of my services cost you a penny. That's what we're able to, like if we're having a challenge selling free, then we got a big problem when you say the same thing, but instead of saying, and all my services are free, you have to say, and these services are going to cost you $50,000. What's the solution? What have I been teaching real estate agents for the past 10 years? We did, we did not see the fact that the real estate commission was going to go away to the buyer agent. The reason we started to do what I'm going to talk about is because we didn't like the fact that the listing agent and the seller were setting our fee. How do I run a business? So I got a team, a team of agents. I'm already splitting the commission with them. How do I run a business or calculate how much money I'm going to make if I don't even know what I'm going to get paid when I sell the home, right? Somebody else is dictating what I'm going to get paid. They're deciding what commission I'm going to make. So 10 years ago, we thought, well, how can we work this so um, we can negotiate the fee directly with the buyer, but get the seller to pay for it, Okay. So we can still say to the buyer, we're going to do this for you and this for you and this for you and this for you, but none of my services cost you anything because we're going to get uh, the seller to pay for this inside the agreement of purchase and sale, okay? So there is a way for you to still negotiate your fee directly with the buyer. Now, mind you, doing it this way, the buyer would be responsible for the 2% or 3% or whatever you've negotiated with the buyer if we can't get the seller to pay for it. How many of you are interested in learning this? Let me know. Type into comments if you've been following this story and you want to know more information about what is likely going to happen. You see, the NAR, they can't pay a fine of $1.8 million. It get, gets worse than that. If you Google this Sherman Act, okay, there's something called a, a trouble effect. What the hell is a trouble effect? That means that the 1.8 million, and a judge is going to decide this soon, can be tripled. Now, I'll tell you why they do this. So this Sherman Act is about uh, collusion, right? It's about we don't want uh, big companies ripping people off, and that's what they're accusing of organized real estate. Like what, They're accusing us of all getting together and uh, ripping off the uh, poor home sellers and making the home sellers, uh, forcing them to pay the buyer agent a commission, even though they don't get any services from the buyer, uh, we're, we're bad people. We forced the seller to do this. Now, I know they knew what they were getting into. They knew the commission was 5 or 6%, but still, it is what it is. We lost, right? We lost. Read the Sherman Act. Okay, now, why is there a treble effect? Why will the $1.8 billion fine possibly be tripled? Well, here's how it works. If a bunch of companies collude and they rip off um, consumers, the worst case can't be oh, well, you got to pay back the people you ripped off, um, like whatever amount you ripped them off for, because there would be no harm in ripping people off, right? Well, it's like, well, if we get caught, we just have to pay what we would have uh, would have had to pay anyway, right? So that's why there's a trouble effect. That's why this could be tripled. So what's going to happen here? The franchises, you see them settling this. Uh, oh, and by the way, if you guys seen the news uh, uh, recently, that Warren Buffett is sucked into this, right? Now, Warren's got a lot of money. The lawyers are like, wow, they're, you know, they're rubbing their hands together. This guy's got some money. So this is going to, you're thinking right now, what the hell has this got to do with me? I just want to, you know, work with my buyers and sellers, do a good job. This isn't about us, but we're getting sucked into it. Okay. 
what's going to happen is going to be a compromise. If the NAR can't pay their debt, right, the Department of Justice, who they've been sitting on their hands. Remember, in 2020, they had a beef with the National Association of Realtors when this CCP policy went into place, right? Clear cooperation policy. They didn't like that. They didn't like the fact that a homeowner in the United States uh, was forced uh, to compensate an agent that's not working for them as a condition to having their home on MLS. That's what they did. They said, yep, uh, we're going to force you to do it. Now, had they not done that, uh, probably we wouldn't be where we are today, but they did it. Now, recently, you probably see that um, the NAR said, okay, well, now it's all right. It's okay now for the seller to offer 0%. They can offer zero now, but that was only as a result of all of these lawsuits that are happening. So we know how to negotiate our fee with sellers. And I think our seller commission, our listing commission could go up because we can argue that a lot of buyers are not going to want to pay their, their buyer agent all this money. Uh, they're probably just going to go call the person with the sign on the lawn. So if that's you, you're the listing agent, we could argue, well, you should get paid more. You're doing more work, right? You've got to do the listing end, the buyer end. Now, some agents don't like dual agency. Well, I don't know how this is going to work then because how do we force the buyer to pay uh, the buyer agent? Uh, could you imagine saying to a first-time buyer, oh, yeah, to hire me, it's $20,000. And the poor first-time buyer says, I've just spent four years saving up. My, that's my down payment. And now I got to give it to you. I won't be able to buy a home. So this is a problem. They're going to have to figure this out. But I did 10 years ago. Should I tell you how it works? Look, I have created a report here. It's called the Future of Buyer Commissions. You guys want it? Type in your email address into the comments below. Okay, type in your email address right now and I'll send this out and it'll explain what has happened, why it's happened, what's likely going to happen and what you can do about it to negotiate your fee with buyers. Okay, that's my job as a real estate coach. I always want to be years and years. Now, I did write a book that you can find on Amazon and I wrote this book eight years ago and the name of the book is called the death of the traditional real estate agent. The death of the traditional real estate agent. You can find it on Amazon where I actually predicted and talked about these changes in real estate. Okay, in the book, we talk about how solo agents are gonna struggle and these um, traditional solo agents are gonna struggle and there's gonna be this rise of the super profitable sales team. And this, the team will be able to do more uh, things for buyers and sellers than the solo agent. It's going to be very difficult for the solo agent to survive. Okay, how do we get paid by buyers directly from the buyer? How are we going to get paid if there's zero offered on MLS? Let's have your comments. This is a bee's nest, by the way. Um, whenever I go on social media and I talk about this, we get people that are like, yeah, man, I'm glad it happened. We get people that are mad or other people that deny it or uh, it's never going to happen. Uh, believe me, folks, it's going to happen. Uh, let me repeat this. They lost. Do you think the guys that own Remax are pretty smart? think they're dummies? They, why would they cough up $70 million? Why would Keller, Gary Keller cough up $85 million? Because they're afraid they're going to lose. How many of you would say they, they uh, made a pretty good decision? Because NAR did lose. Okay, and the penalty as it stands right now is $1.8 billion, billion dollars. But that's before the trouble effect, okay? So the Department of Justice, my prediction is, is they're going to step in and they're going to decide how real estate's going to work. Yep, they gave NAR a chance. They gave us a chance. Organized real estate, you guys had your chance. You had your chance. We had a beef with you. We told you we had a problem. They have sat back on their hands and they're letting all these civil lawsuits have their way and... Now they're going to step in and somebody else is going to decide how organized real estate is going to work because our self-regulation, we couldn't figure it out. How many of you also maybe don't feel sorry for the NAR? I think it was in 1996, your association, the National Association of Realtors, sold Realtor.com. You guys know that, right? If you go to Realtor.com, it's not run by Realtors. 
Okay, it's run by a media group, the same company that owns Fox News. Okay, so they sold us out, in my opinion. They sold Realtor.com. And then they syndicated all of our listings. So that's right, Realtors. You keep working hard. You guys just keep working hard, working hard. And we're going to make a law that says when you list a house, you have to broker load that listing. You can't be a pocket listing. You got to broker load that within whatever it is, 24, 48 hours, 72 hours. But you got to broker load that thing. Why? So we can sell your data. We can syndicate that and sell your leads. We can sell all this to Zillow and Redfin and everybody else. So um, there's a lot of realtors that are making the decision to leave the National Association of Realtors. They don't believe that their own association that they pay these dues for, they don't believe this association is actually representing their best interest. What about you guys? Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do you agree with what I'm saying? And it's okay not to agree with me. I mean, I don't have a crystal ball. I've been right so far on this, but I don't know for sure what's going to happen. I'm giving you my opinion based on how I see things and how this thing is played out. But the NAR had their chance. The Department of Justice says, we don't like your policy. Um, your policy, the CCP ruling, okay, that policy is in violation of the law. Now, an association has the rules, right? You can do this, you can't do this. But an association can't make up rules that are in violation of written law. Would you guys agree with that? Right? You can't, like, you can make up whatever you want, but it can't be against the law. And that's what happened here, folks. Yes, I know it worked that way. It worked for a long time. It worked until it didn't work. But they lost. And now there's lawsuit after lawsuit, after lawsuit. How many of you are pretty frustrated that if you, whoever you sold a house to over the last couple of years is getting direct mail from lawyers saying, if you sold your house in the last three years, um, you could be, um, you know, you could be owed uh, tens of thousands of dollars. You know, in other words, making the clients feel like they got ripped off. If you sold your house in the last few years and you used a realtor, uh, you didn't do anything wrong, but they might have, and you might you might be owed tens of thousands of dollars. Not good for the industry, right? All NAR had to do was play ball with the department. That's all they had to do. But no, it's the largest trade association in the world, right? So, um, you know, they thought they could do it. They, they were wrong. So you got to learn how to attract buyers and sellers. A lot of the buyers are not going to want to pay you anything no matter what you do or say. A lot of the sellers, how many of you are getting grief from sellers right now? They got this stuff in the mail and they're like, oh, I heard real estate agents rip off home sellers. I heard you guys make us pay them more than we need to pay, right? It's a, it's a bee's nest. Let me show you how to attract the buyers. I'm using the word tra attract. I'm not talking about buying leads from Zillow and you know, get your headset on and calling 100 people to get one person on the phone that tells you to buzz off. I'm talking about what is it that you can offer buyers so they want to come to you. They call you, you're not chasing them. How many of you, forget about how to do it for a minute, but how, how many of you agree that that would be better? If you could figure out the thing or things to offer buyers and sellers, so they pick up the phone and they call you. That's the new call to action, them calling you. Well, Proctor, how do you know anything about it? Well, I, w I became the number one REMAX agent in the entire world by offering buyers and sellers something they wanted to get them to call me. Now, here's the interesting point. I became the number one REMAX agent in the world within 36 months of having my real estate license. Yup. Within 36 months, within three years of having my license, I was named number one in the world for commissions earned. It gets even better than that. Nobody expected me to succeed in real estate. Before I got into real estate, I never sold anything. I didn't even like houses. Okay. Uh, I knew nothing about marketing. So when I got into the business, just like you, here's what I believed. If you're a good real estate agent and you know the rules and you care about your clients, that should be enough, right? 
Well, I did work hard and I cared about my clients and I did a good job and I was starving to death that first year because I believed, you know, build it and they will come. I do a good job. It's like having a great restaurant. You could have the world's best restaurant and you could have great service, but if you're in a bad location and nobody knows about your restaurant, you're going to go to business. Meanwhile, around the corner, there's a restaurant where the food isn't near as good and the customer service is lousy, but they're in a great location. They got great marketing. It's the marketing that helped me go from being a nobody to the number one Remax agent in the world. Doesn't end there. I kept being the number one Remax agent in the world over and over and over again. Okay, what have I done for the last 30 years? I show you, you, all of you, how to do what I did, right? There's a formula. Now, you might have a coach. You might be getting advice from somebody, but may I ask this question? Is the person you're getting advice from, did they make of millions and millions of dollars every year actually selling real estate. Did they do that, right? Because it's hard for a person that's never done that to show you how to do it. It begs the question, you know, if you're so smart, if you know all the answers, how come you didn't make millions and millions of dollars every single year? How come you weren't the number one agent in your franchise? This is what I bring to the table. I know how to structure the offer a purchase and sale. We're going to put a clause in there, and that clause is going to allow you to negotiate your fee directly with the buyer, but the seller is going to pay for it. Now, you don't know how that works. I understand it. I know how it works. This is part of what we teach people. I've been teaching it for 10 years. Um, my, my members or students, whatever you want to call them, um, very, it's very common for them to negotiate three or four or even 5% when they're representing a buyer. And I know your response is, well, um, that's not true. You're skeptical. I can show you uh, the closing documents, by the way. Some of you might say, well, um, you're ripping the clients off. Okay, well, you get to decide your fee. How about this? If we don't want to rip anybody off, why don't we do it at 0%? Because I have realtors that say, oh, I just got into real estate. I just want to help people. Great. Then do it for free. Tell the buyers and sellers it's 0% because I really want to help you. Come on, guys. We want to do a good job. We want to help you. But we also want to make a living. right? So you get to decide what fee you want. Commissions aren't fixed. We know that. But would you like to learn how to negotiate a higher fee? How many of you think that you do a better job for your clients? If you do a better job, shouldn't you deserve to negotiate a higher fee, to ask for a higher fee? It's one thing to ask for. It's the other thing to actually know how to get it. If you wanted to hire the best architect in your city, would it cost you more money? Yes. If you wanted to hire the best surgeon to operate on you, would it, hire, would it cost you more money? Yes. If you wanted to hire the very best contractor or builder, would it cost you more money? Yes. I coach you up how to be the best realtor in your marketplace, to offer a buyers and sellers what they really, really want and negotiate what you deserve, okay? Changes are happening here, folks. Now, get this report if you haven't got it. Make sure you get that. Type in your email address. It's 24 pages, I think. I don't know how many pages it is, but it's, uh, I've just printed out one page here. It's the front cover. But if you drop in your email address, you're going to like, cost you nothing. Uh, nobody's going to hound you or anything. We'll just send it to you. Um, and by the way, how many of you would like to book a free breakthrough call with my team? It won't be with me. It'd be with one of my team members and it will cost you zero dollars and we'll spend 45 minutes with you explaining this to you. We'll ask you a couple questions about your business, how you're doing it, why you're doing it that way. Why don't you check it out? You can be skeptical, but being skeptical could cost you and your family hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's a reason why Craig Proctor has created more millionaire real estate agents than any other coach or trainer in the industry. If you want to do the one-on-one, -on -one, which costs you zero dollars, if someone could type in craigproctorcall.com, no spaces, craigproctorcall.com into the comments below, that's a clickable link. Okay, once it's typed in craigproctorcall.com, it's a clickable link. You'll go to my QD day timer. And if there's any spots left, you grab one of those spots uh, and we'll, we'll lay it all out for you. We'll ask you a bunch of questions. This is not a, just a sales pitch, uh, trying to sell you something. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to help you. The easiest way 
for me to convince you that I can actually help you is just to help you. How many of you found this extremely helpful today? Please smash the like button. Okay, give me a thumbs up, um, the little blue like button. Hit that or maybe the little red heart. If you could please do me a favor and smash the, the little heart or the thumbs up, the like button. Um, because I want to get the word out. And the more people that do that, the more Facebook is going to share this uh, session uh, that we've done here with other real estate agents. Now, you can share this as well. There's a share button there. So if you know other real estate agents that you think would benefit from our conversation, maybe your broker owner, they want to help all the agents. Um, but let me know, did you agree with Craig Proctor today? Did you disagree? That's okay. I mean, that's why we have these debates, right? I want to know, do you agree with this? Do you disagree? What do you think is going to happen? What are you hearing? Um, would you like to learn how to negotiate your fee directly with the buyer and get the seller still to pay for it? Do you want to know how to do it? Because we're doing it and we've been doing it for uh, at least eight years. Okay, go check out the book. It's on Amazon. It's called The Death of the Traditional Real Estate Agent. Folks, I want to thank you so much for being with uh, me here today. Uh, add your comments below. Let's keep this conversation going. Make sure you smash the like button. Turn on notifications, okay? Like this page. Because whenever I go live, if you turn on notifications, you, fo you follow me, you're going to start to see all my information. And once you start seeing it and hearing it, you can't unhear it. Uh, I want to thank you so much for being with me today. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you again next time. This is Real Estate Coach Craig Proctor. Take care. Hi, this is Craig Proctor. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed that video. And listen, I've got a lot more information for you to help you grow your real estate business. You see, several times a week, I record new videos and I load them onto this YouTube channel. What I'd like you to do if you'd like to access them are two important things, and both are totally free. Number one is I'd like you to subscribe to this channel. You're gonna see a little subscribe button for you to click on. And if you don't already have an account with YouTube, it's free for you to set it up. It's really easy, it's free, but you've got to subscribe to this channel. And the most important thing is to ring the little bell right next to the subscribe button. And that's gonna let you know every time I load new money-making videos to help you grow your real estate business. So make sure you subscribe right now, you ring the little bell, and we'll see you on the next video.